Hello and welcome. This is the next topic, topic 31 of OCR A-level chemistry, is carboxylic acids and esters. So I'm going to start off just talking about carboxylic acids. They are soluble in water because of their OH bonds, so they make hydrogen bonds with water, make them soluble. And they also react as other acids do, so they react with metals to make salt and hydrogen. They react with bases to make salts and water, and they react with carbonates to make salts, water, carbon dioxide. But it's a new reaction with carboxylic acids that I want to talk about, and that is the esterification reaction, so making an ester. And I'm going to start off with three ways of making an ester. The first one is carboxylic acids with alcohol, the second is acid anhydride with alcohol, and the third is an acyl chloride with alcohol. And the most usual way of doing this is with carboxylic acids and alcohol, and with that you need an acid catalyst. And on the specification, it gives the example of concentrated sulfuric acid. And in the reaction between this, which is ethanoic acid, and propanonol, what happens is they join together to make an ester bond, which I'll draw in a minute, and they lose water in the process. So the OH from the carboxylic acid and one of the hydrogens from the alcohol gets lost as water, and you end up with a bond between the carbon of the carbonyl group and this oxygen of the alcohol group. And don't forget this water molecule. More often than not, that's forgotten and loses people marks. And you don't need to know the mechanism for this reaction. You just need to know that a carboxylic acid reacts with an alcohol in the presence of an acid catalyst to make an ester and water. And when you're naming esters, it's easy if you go back to the thing that it was made from. So the carboxylic acid and the alcohol. Now this was ethanoic acid and this was propanol. And with esters, you name this part first, so the propyl group, and that's on an ethanoate. So this is called propyl ethanoate. The first part always comes from the alcohol that you used, and the carboxylate comes from the carboxylic acid that you used. And if you've just been given the structure of an ester, then what I do is look for the bit which would have come from the carboxylic acid, and that's the second part of the name, and then the part which would have come from an alcohol is the first part of the name. And it always goes alkyl alkanoate. And I could do a very similar thing, so instead of using ethanoic acid, I used ethanoic anhydride, so you get the same ester product, but you get a different other product. So let's just go through that. Okay, this is ethanoic anhydride. It looks like two ethanoic acids, but with an H2O removed from the middle, which is where the anhydride comes from, so losing water. Reacting with the same propan one and it makes the same ester. Propyl ethanoate is still made, but instead of producing water, it makes ethanoic acid. That's the other product. If you do this right, that ethanoic acid will then react with more propan one so that the only product you make is the ester, which is why that's really useful. But this is the equation that I've seen more often than not on exams. And as well as esterification, so making esters, we also need to know how to break an ester apart, so hydrolysis, which is using water to split an ester into a carboxylic acid and alcohol. And to do that, you need to heat the ester with either hot aqueous alkali or hot aqueous acid. It needs to be aqueous, obviously, because you're adding water, and there needs to be water present, and then the acid and the alkali will both catalyze this reaction in the reverse direction. But if you do acid hydrolysis or alkaline hydrolysis, you get slightly different products. Okay, so what we're doing is taking that ester, I'm using the same one, propyl ethanoic, and then heating it with aqueous alkali or heating it with aqueous acid. And in both cases, you get essentially the same thing, which is the alcohol and the carboxylic acid. But because you're making carboxylic acid, the carboxylic acid will react with this alkali, making a salt, but it wouldn't react with this acid to make a salt. So the products are slightly different in each case. If you do it with hot aqueous alkali, then you get a salt. So this is just hydroxide, so it's sodium hydroxide. You get sodium ethanoate as a salt. You still get the alcohol and this case, and the water that comes from the reaction between the alkali and the acid. But if you use acid hydrolysis, then you end up with the carboxylic acid as a protonated acid. So if you wanted the carboxylic acid out of the top one, you'd need to protonate it by adding acid after you've done this step. The next thing we're going to talk about is acyl chlorides. Now, I went briefly into acyl chlorides on the Friedel Crafts part of the electrophilic substitution of aromatic compounds. But acyl chlorides will also do other reactions, and I'm going to talk about those briefly now. Okay, so to form an acyl chloride, in this case, ethanoyl chloride, we react ethanoic acid with SOCl2, and that would produce the 
at the normal chloride. Now, obviously, if you use a different carboxylic acid, you'd make a different acyl chloride. And there are three types of acyl chloride reactions that are on the specification. Now, acid chlorides or acyl chlorides are very reactive. So it's shown that they will react with water to make carboxylic acid. You have to be very careful with these reactants, not to put any water near them, because water will react with this to make the carboxylic acid back again. So any hint of moisture, and this reaction will take place, making the ethanoic acid and HCl. Now, other than this reaction, they basically react like a carboxylic acid, but just more vigorously. So they will do a sterification reaction. If I reacted ethanoyl chloride with propan 1 on, it will make the same products of ethanoic acid did, and as ethanoic anhydride would do. But in this case, instead of the H combining with the OH to make water, it makes HCl. So the other product is HCl. But the first one is still propyl ethanoate, the same as it would be if it was ethanoic anhydride or ethanoic acid. Now these will also react with ammonia or with any amines to make amides. And with ammonia, it's very similar to the last one. You lose a H from the ammonia and a Cl from the acid chloride to make HCl. And then you also end up with this, which is a primary amide. And it follows on that if I reacted this with NH2R, so an amine, then you end up with NHR here, which would be a secondary amide. The other product would still be hydrogen chloride. So I've just put one of those in the bottom as well. It says specifically you need to know how to make primary amides and secondary amides from acyl chloride. But in many ways, it reacts very similar to ethanoic acid. So it would do the same kind of esterification as ethanoic acid. And these, so again, making an amide, is very similar to esterification in that it loses an H from the ammonia in this case and the Cl from next to the carbon on the roof, which is very similar to what happens in the esterification. And that is everything from this topic on carboxylic acids and esters. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you join me for the next one. Goodbye.